The UK is inching towards totalitarianism as it green lights the research and development of stage one of a central bank digital currency, the digital pound. The Bank of England released a consultation paper recently about moving forward with the research and development for its digital pound. And Sir John Cunliffe gave a speech about this. While this process will take a few years to do the research and to develop just the first stages of a digital currency. This is a step in the wrong direction. That is for any regular citizen living in the UK who does not like tyranny. I will link both the consultation paper link and the speech in the description of this video, but I would like to focus on a few things from the speech that stand out as important points to look at. First, he outlines that based on current trends, a central bank digital currency will be needed in the UK. This would be a digital form of money issued by the Bank of England for use by households and businesses for payments. And because this project will take several years to complete, the bank and the treasury are now proceeding to the next stage, which includes policy and technical development, including the development of a blueprint. Now we're gonna look at exactly what he means by based on the current trends, we're gonna need to do this. And the UK will just need a digital currency because it doesn't make the best argument. He points out current trends in the way that we use money to make payments the emergence of digital technologies and how the Bank of England does physical money for the public while private banks issue digital money for individuals. And because more and more people are using digital bank money and only 15% of people are officially using physical cash and because of developments like contactless payment, this makes the case for a CBDC or programmable money. Essentially what he's saying here is look, there's been a lot of innovation in the free market and individuals are starting to choose other forms of money that compete with the government's monopoly on money. And since those are better forms in terms of their technology, their speed of settlement, the access to uh, various banking features that people want through those services, well, they're starting to attract too much and it could put us at risk of maintaining a monopoly control over money. Therefore, we need to implement a digital form of our own money. That way we can outlaw all the other ones and people will have to use ours instead. By the way, if you would like to buy gold and silver before it becomes illegal for you to do so, if your country institutes a CBDC, check out my ultimate guide to buying precious metals linked in the description below. It will teach you everything you need to know about avoiding all the scams, all the frauds and outright theft, losing potentially thousands of dollars by making mistakes buying gold. In criticizing some recent developments in the field of money, he points at crypto assets and says they are highly speculative assets. The value is extremely volatile because there is nothing behind them. That's partly true, but not really the reason why many cryptocurrencies are volatile. Many cryptocurrencies are volatile because they were actually created as scams. They are marketed to get a bunch of people who didn't know any better to buy them while the creators sold them. So you're gonna have volatility there. Pair that with the illiquid markets and the relatively low market caps of a lot of these cryptocurrencies and you get massive volatility. He also points out they have no intrinsic value and for that reason, they are not suitable and not used for general payment purposes. Now. Really, economically speaking, there's no such thing as intrinsic value. There's no su such thing as objective value. The value of anything is subjective based on what somebody is willing to give up in order to get that item. But I think the point he's really trying to make is some sort of use value to it. A lot of people make the argument that, uh, you know, gold and silver have value because of their industrial usefulness in electronics and medical devices, whereas crypto assets, cryptocurrencies don't have any use value outside of being used as money. The problem with this is that for most of human history, gold was used as money and it was used for things like jewelry and uh, making art, but it's really not clear whether the chicken or the egg comes first there. It was probably used as jewelry because it was valued as money, which is why people maintain their wealth through gold jewelry still to this day in many places around the world like India. It also seems that looking at the decline in the monetary value of something like silver, that the more use something 
thing has outside of being used as money, the less likely it is for that item to exist as good money for a long time. And the irony here is that he points out that cryptocurrencies don't have intrinsic value, therefore they are not good as money, but he doesn't even show how a digital currency made by the government could have any more intrinsic value than something like Bitcoin. He said cryptocurrencies, you can think of them as a bet rather than trusted money, but the digital pound would be safe. It would be a trusted form of money, accepted for everyday transactions by households and firms. It's like, it still doesn't have any intrinsic value. People only use it because they're forced to use it because the government has monopoly on violence and they enforce the use of their own currency by outlawing the use of its competition. So I guess if avoiding jail equals intrinsic value, then you've got a point. He mentions the decline of cash being used and that the immediate response is to make sure cash will remain available to any and all that want to use it. Earlier, he pointed out that only 15% of transactions that take place today use physical physical cash, but that's recorded transactions. In fact, cash transactions, especially in, you know, black market type of transactions, they're going to make up a way higher percentage than the official numbers will ever show. This is because physical cash that the governments create is really the only form of anonymous money. Any sort of internet money like Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and any digital payments using dollars or uh, pounds or any other government currency, those are all gonna be extremely trackable and not useful for things that you don't want your government to know about. But physical cash, that's the only anonymous form of payment because there's no digital way to track those paper bills. And that is the real reason why governments want to completely eradicate cash because if they clamp down on the digital side of things, well, that's gonna create more of an incentive to use another form of money that the government cannot control. And so they have to eradicate those other forms of money as much as possible before they clamp down because then once the incentive to try and use a different form of money like physical cash comes in, well, there's no more physical cash in circulation, so you don't have that choice. He says, we cannot ignore the fact that the safest form of money, public money, is issued by the state for general use. Now, I've mentioned three times so far the word safe. And if you read this whole thing, the word safe comes up a, a lot. In fact, let's find out right now. Six times he uses the word safe to describe only government money. Somebody wise once said that the way you know a politician is lying is that their lips are moving, but one thing that you know that they're lying about the most is the thing that they most loudly proclaim. And so when they talk about their own digital money being safe over and over and over again, maybe it's because they don't actually believe it would be safe, so they might be trying to convince themselves. He then goes on to describe something that I have talked about many times before, that this is what the rollout of a central bank digital currency will look like. He says that we envisage the digital pound as a partnership with the private sector. The bank would provide the digital pound and the central infrastructure, including the core ledger. Private sector firms, which could be banks or approved non-banks, they would provide the interface between the bank's central infrastructure and users by offering wallets and payment services. These private companies would be able to integrate the digital pound as the settlement asset into the services they would offer to wallet holders. Okay, if that didn't make sense, here's what that means. Banks hold your money for you right now. That's what they do. They're the plumbing of the financial system. Banks, though, also have their own bank. This is called the central bank, and this was brought about from a long history of things leading one into another, but basically so that if one bank had a bank run, they didn't have enough gold because it was all money used to be backed by gold, they would just draw gold from the central bank. So you eliminated risk of bank runs. Well, obviously gold standard ended everywhere. So the system stayed in place even though there was no gold. So now the reserves are just more dollars. This is bank reserves held at the central bank. So the central bank is the bank for these banks and these banks hold their reserves with the central bank and then these banks hold your money. This means that our current monetary system is a distributed private ledger system. Your bank, Central uh, Chase, Bank of America, whatever your bank is, they have a list of all the accounts and what money is in them and what transactions took place to get that money in there. Every bank has their own list private ledgers. Banks operate as the plumbing of the financial system. A central bank digital currency, though, says that instead of having a bunch of different ledgers, we have one private ledger held with just the central bank. So everybody has their own account directly with the central bank. 
You don't need all these other banks. You can bypass the banking system. This becomes important in a day and age where you have modern monetary theory and infinite inflation and money printing where debt doesn't provide any real returns and you start to destroy the foundation of the banking system because their loans don't actually provide a real return. So you need to do something in order to keep the banks around, which means you use them for the infrastructure for the central bank digital currency. If instead of having an account with your bank, you now have an account with the central bank, well, that eliminates the need for your bank. So central banks won't want to do that. So they'll just ask the banks to be the infrastructure for the new CBDC system. And that's exactly what he's talking about here, that the wallets held at the banks would be operated on a pass-through basis. Your account would not constitute a claim on the bank, the wallet provider, in the way that a bank account is today. So your deposit with the bank today is a liability. They owe you that money. It wouldn't be the case anymore. Your account would be directly with the Fed or the Bank of England or whatever central bank is in your country. The wallets would hold all customer-related information and pass through the customer's instructions to the bank's infrastructure. All digital pounds would be held on the central bank's central ledger. Again, one ledger, one list of all the accounts for every individual and banks turn into just operating for the infrastructure of the system. No more assets, no more liabilities, no more banking crashes, no more financial system failures, just part of the central bank's system. Now, right now you have your account with your bank, right? Well, that means that that bank has all your information. And so they've got your name, social security number, financial history, the eye color, like your family history. They know everything about you. And they're constantly telling all that information to the government. Also, many banks will decide whether they want to be in business with you or not. If you are a small business, let's say, and you are operating in a industry that the bank doesn't like then the bank can just say, we're no longer gonna offer you banking services anymore. This happened a few years ago with OnlyFans. A lot of banks said, nope, we're not gonna process these transactions anymore because we don't wanna participate in this industry. We saw this a lot with cannabis. We saw this a lot. We're seeing this a lot right now with small gold and silver dealers. They're finding it hard to maintain business accounts at banks. Even uh, Pew Pew dealers, they're having a very hard time finding banking services. But 10 tyrants competing for power is better than one who has it all. And this is what a central bank digital currency and the one being proposed right now by the Bank of England is going to be. Full central tyranny. One list that has every single person's information, all of the financial accounts of every person, of every business. If you want to be able to buy or sell, if this moves forward, you will not be able to do that without the central bank's digital currency. If you want to have a business license, you'll have to have a wallet with the central bank. If you want to accept any customer payments, customers only have their digital wallets. You'll only be able to do business if you use the central bank's digital currency. And as an individual, if you want to be able to not go to jail for evading taxes, if you wanna get your tax returns, if you want to get your social security checks, if you wanna get your medicine paid for, whatever the situation is, there'll be a carrot and there'll be a stick. Everybody will be forced into the system. And when you control the money, you control the flow of resources in the entire economy. You have full control. You can implement new taxes or tax deductions or tax credits in real time. You can stop transactions. You can institute rations on any good in live time. No bureaucracy, no waiting for Congress to stop arguing over things, All or parliament in this case. All you have to do is click a button. And if that power doesn't scare you, then you haven't read enough history. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.